why would anyone pay attention to your content when there are so many others, particularly famous people, um, really brilliant, charismatic, charming people on the internet, whether it's through video or through article, why would anyone pay attention to your articles, your videos, your podcasts, et cetera, et cetera? I'm asking that question <laughs> not, not to discourage us, but as a sincere uh, question for all of us to reflect on. Because, well, it's the reality is that there are people out there uh, in your field uh, of expertise that are probably more charming, uh, so-called interesting in how they communicate, uh, how they make their content uh, than you are. Or well, they're certainly true of me. There's people in my field that are way more charming and are willing to edit their videos to make it look much more entertaining than, than I'm willing to. Uh, so actually, I want to put the question to you for your commenting below before we go on. So I'm going to ask you this question, and I, I, I really hope you will comment below for my genuine curiosity. Pause the recording, be comment before you go on. The question is this. Why do you pay attention to my content? Why are you watching this video? I mean, you are more qualified than anyone else in my audience right now to answer this question because you are watching this video. Why are you watching this video when there are thousands, millions of other much more entertaining videos that you can be watching right now? Or even within my field, people who are smarter than me, who have more experience, who teach more um, impactfully uh, than me. You could be watching their videos. Why are you watching this one right now? Why do I have your attention when I'm a relative nobody in my field and in, in the online world of videos? Why are you watching this video? Why, why do you watch my videos? I invite you to comment below because I think the responses will be quite enlightening as a response to the original question of this video, which is why should anyone pay attention to our content? Why do they pay attention to our content when we are in competition, so-called, with so many other bigger and more charming creators? So why do you pay attention to my content, my videos? Go ahead and comment below, pause the recording before we go on. Okay, ready? All right, so let me share with you my perspective on this. I think, by the way, like I said, the comments below is probably as good or better of a response than what I'm going to give you now. Um, so my perspective is this. One is it's about relationship, right? When you begin creating content, uh, you, you might have the fantasy that, oh, if I just make a good enough article or um, a good enough video, uh, the internet, the internet will just make it go viral. Um, you know, the internet rewards um, good content, so something good out there. Even if I'm a nobody, it'll go viral. And sometimes that's true. However, of course, in the beginning of your content creation journey, this is not blaming you, but the reality is you're not that good yet. No matter how many hours, dozens of hours you might spend writing a blog post or making a video or a podcast episode or whatever, you think it's good. Here's the problem. The more time you spend creating a piece of content, the more attached you become to it, which means you, you become kind of crazy and you, you, you live in this illusion that this piece of content must be really good because you spent so much time making it. Okay, that's a danger, which is why I always teach people, I always try to tell you to create lightly, to create lightly, at least first time you put an idea out there, create it as lightly as you can, because you have to put many, many ideas out there to notice which ones have merit in the eyes of your audience. And the, the, the ones that have merit, that ones that are more engaged with, more liked, more comments, shares, whatever it may be. Those are the ones you spend, you then spend more time 
uh, improving and then distributing even further. You can Google the three stages of content creation, search for it, ask AI about it, whatever you do. The three stages of content creation is what I put out there years ago and people find it really helpful. And um, if you don't know it well, you should I recommend that you study it. So back to my first point here. It's the relationship you have with your first audience is what gets them to come back to your content again and again and again, as opposed to anyone else's charming, uh, uh, brilliant content. Let me explain. When you begin putting stuff out there, who's who's like, like I said, if you're lucky that your thing goes viral, the internet, uh, strangers start to see it, but usually it's your friends and family first. It's your colleagues first. It's your fellow classmates who took a course, you know, maybe you've taken a course from me or whatever, and your fellow classmates, you've gotten to know some of them and you kind of follow each other and you begin with them. And because they know you a bit now, maybe you've talked with them, maybe, maybe you've supported each other through the comments in the course or comments in, on, in a Facebook group or whatever it may be. So because now here's the thing, the relationship is not just human to human relationship. It's algorithmic relationship too. Because you have interacted with someone online, especially in like in a Facebook group or on LinkedIn or whatever, you have interacted, you've commented on their thing, they've commented on yours. The algorithm is just going to prioritize their content over, you know, Brene Brown's content or, 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 or whatever. The, 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 uh, the, the closer you, you have connected with someone on social media, particularly, the more the algorithm will show you their stuff and the more the algorithm will show them your stuff. So relationship is number one, which is why I've said in the past, before you build a big audience, so-called big audience, okay, you have the opportunity that I don't have I have a big enough audience where I have lost this opportunity. I have lost this advantage that you have. And what is that? The ability to connect one-to-one -one with more with more demonstration of care to your individual, your first few fans, right? The more you can message with them to really show care, ask them <clears throat> what it is that you can support them with, and then create that kind of content and create those kinds of offers. And the more you you continue to care for them through in the comp by replying to their comments, doing one on one uh, direct messages and and maybe even calls and th the more you do that, the more they're like, wow, this is now not just a content creator. This is almost becoming a friend. This is becoming a mentor of, of mine. You know, and like I said, I have lost that advantage because as for years now, I've lost that advantage. I haven't had the energy to reply to your comments, as you've noticed. And I, I, I'm i sorry, but part of my way of being sustainable is to not be too available on social media. Let's just be honest with it. This is, but in my early years, I had the energy. In my early years, when I was getting just one or two comments or three or five sometimes comments on my videos or on my blog, my posts, I had the energy and the motivation to respond now my all my energy goes into um you know taking care of my courses and my my client group and you know what i mean like as you grow your energy has to go towards your paying customers and clients and you have less energy towards social media but it's like in the beginning particularly those of you who don't have a full client roster yet and, and you still have leftover energy to care for your social media commenters you have that advantage that I don't have and that bigger creators definitely don't have. Now, the more someone grows, the more they can then have a team of people to respond to comments, but still not you. I mean, it's still not them. I mean, sometimes you've got a like a superstar creator, like um, I know this is not a perfect example, but I'll, I'll share it. Uh, someone like um, Elon Musk surprisingly replies to comments not not all the comments obviously but more than you would expect and that creates this viral effect i'm like oh my gosh you know um that that famous that funny meme look this up 
senpai noticed me, or <laughs> senpai meaning like a mentor or teacher, uh, Japanese this is coming from the Japanese anime uh, space. Senpai noticed me, meaning teacher noticed me. Um, so like someone influential, like replies to your comment, you're like, oh my goodness. But most bigger influencers don't have the energy to do that anymore. They might have a team, but you, the replies come from their team, not from them. And yes, it is. so right now I'm in this sort of like um, unresponsive valley. It's like at the beginning, as a small creator, you have the energy to reply and you should. Uh, it, you have the energy to, and you create this relationship with people much more likely to come, keep coming back to your content at the beginning. And then you get into this valley of a, like a small medium creator like me who has no budget for a team to reply yet. And also not just that, but I'm, I'm unsure I want anyone else to reply to comments except myself, right? It's like, so this valley of small medium creator, which is very unresponsive. And then it keeps growing, keeps growing. And then, oh my gosh, so much money. You can hire a team to emulate your voice or eventually AI emulate your voice to respond, to reply to comments and things like that. And it's like you back back to more of a so-called relationship with the team, but it's really uh, with the audience, but it's really not the creative relationship. It's more of the team or the AI's relationship with the team, with the, with the comments. So anyway, that's number one advantage that you have that bigger creators don't is your personal care, your human touch. It's irreplaceable by a team or by AI, your human touch. Okay, that's number one. Number two is that you are infinitely more relatable to your audience now than Brene Brown can be, than you know Joe Dispenza can be. Because these people are so far along their journey of transformation and they just live a different lifestyle. Um, of the rich and famous, essentially. Whereas you, dear humble one, are much closer to your actual ideal client in terms of your lifestyle experience and your your journey of transformation. You 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 sure you may be one, two, three, five steps ahead of your ideal client, but you're not five hundred steps ahead of them. You see, and so you can much more relate in your content. You can share your more recent experiences and then someone who's grown far further they when they share their experiences like years and years ago you know they they've forgotten how it really feels so that's 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 really important actually so please share in your content as much about your current experience and your experience of working with clients right like like that is also much more relatable than someone like, like I said, a, a famous influencer like Brene Brown working with people. It's still um, a famous person working with rather than someone who is just a few steps ahead working with someone, uh, a client. And those stories are much more relatable and real in, in the experience than to your typical audience member. So that's really important. And third is simply timing. Timing, okay? When you create content, I've already said this, as you know, I can say it as often as I need to, create more content. I've said just now, create authentic content, right? From your relatability, right? And your care for your audience, create authentic content, but create more content also, create more authentic content. Because when you post something, right? The algorithm social media algorithm will, and the email algorithms will temporarily bump your content higher because of timing. Of course, the algorithms don't show you something, usually don't show you something from years ago. They, they try to show you something from the last hour or the last few days, okay? Compared to someone, a famous person may have made a video two weeks ago. Okay, or made a post two weeks ago, but yours was just posted in the last few hours. And so you get this algorithmic bump. So your audience is more likely to see it than something that was posted. So like just timing, right? Your timing is going to give you a benefit compared to a larger creator because of your eagerness and your um, dedication to showing up on a consistent basis. I hope you are, okay? And the last thing I'll say is this. The question of why should anyone pay attention to my content is actually 
a deeply flawed question in terms of why create content at all. If you are putting stuff out there to say, well, I'm putting it out there so that I can get reactions, I can get engagement, I'm sorry, but you're already on a downward path in your content creation efforts. You're on an unsustainable path, okay? Because if you're going to create for, for external validation as the number one question or the thing that gets you to continue, you're not going to be around as long as I have been. And you're not going to be around long enough, by the way, to get really good at creating. That's the, that's the main point I want to make here. And, and that's what I want to end this video with. You have got to keep coming back every single day to strengthen your internal locus of motivation. This is what it's all about. When, this, when I say this is what it's all about, I mean personal growth. I mean professional development. This is what it's all about. Your internal locus of motivation is what is the, is the ultimate sustainable source of energy that will keep you showing up day after day after day when sometimes there is no reaction to your content. When sometimes you wonder why I thought this brilliant, this idea was brilliant. How come no one else sees it? How come no one else gets it? Or so few people get it. This thing should be going viral. You come back again and again to your reason for creating, that is an internal reason. So what is that for you? Comment below. If no one else cared about the thing you put out there, why might you still be motivated to show up anyway? Add your comment below. Now, I, I'm actually really curious. You might wanna pause this video and before I say anything, Add your comment below. What is your internal locus of motivation to show up consistently, to create content, to put it out there again and again and again, despite lack of response? Put it below. Okay, ready for my thoughts on this? So I need to keep telling you this again and again, because this is the, like the famous Zig Ziglar quote uh, when, when he was asked, why do we have to you know, listen to your motivational tapes? Or why do I have to come to your motivational events again and again? Why can't we just listen to it once and be motivated forever? He says, it's like taking a shower. It's like hygiene. The world will put grime and dust and dirt on you throughout the, throughout the day. And you have to wash yourself again. Same thing. Your monkey mind and the world's values of external validation and the world's pressures, because we are tribal creatures. So we naturally um, you know, value other people's opinions of us. Again, every single day, we'll keep telling you, you should care about our opinion more than your own internal locus of motivation. And that's why you need to come back to your reason again and again to create, create, create. My reason is creativity fitness, well, I know that when I create, especially with the possibility of audience feedback, in the early days when I was making video, I was doing it a hundred times with barely any audience feedback. And there I was practicing creativity fitness already. But I knew that possibly somebody out there with one of these hundred videos, somebody out there um, might actually really have a, some benefit from this, really be impacted in a good way by this. So that possibility of external impact did motivate me, but it motivated me to just keep coming back day after day after day for creativity fitness to say, okay, that possibility is out there. I know that that's a possible upside, but the true upside every single day is it keeps me sharp. It keeps me sharp. It keeps me learning about my field and it keeps me um, practicing the expression of my energy signature. Ultimately, that's why I kept showing up. It's like, what, what is my real voice? What is my real authentic power? How does that show up? I want to keep trying again and again and again with different ideas. And I'll just toss it out there because it has the potential upside also of benefiting other people and growing my audience, et cetera. I might as well put it out there, but I really am doing this for my creativity fitness. And so just like your physical fitness, you don't do this for other people. 
Well, some of you do. Oh, my abs or my, you know, you're, you're, I'm so, look, I'm so fit. Some of you might do this for other people, but the real people who are sustainably fit are the ones who show up for themselves. I hope this is helpful. I look forward to seeing your comments below as well.